getting to know a new camera with charts can be a little dull. So I've tried to make this a7S test a little less dull with the help of my friend, Andrea. I'll start by showing you the default S-Log2 setting, Picture Profile 7, each shown as you would find straight out of camera. The tests performed in this video serve two functions. The first is to determine noise levels when shooting at different exposure levels on log. The second is to observe differences amongst the different color gamuts. Here with S gamut, initial observation shows that it skews a bit green. I've intentionally avoided correcting this or any other creative grading throughout this test so I can do a neutral comparison of how each color setting differs from the others. The second section shows each clip with a Rec. 709 LUT applied. No correction to the color is done, but I will correct gamma levels of different exposures so they match the clip shot at key, the one shot at T8. I've also applied a secondary luma curve to preserve some of the highlights in the window in the upper left. In the third section, I've used a Macbeth chart to match both color and luma of each exposure, as well as the secondary luma curve for the window. The benefit to using a chart is that Resolve 11 will automatically match color values between shots. Notice that when I matched only the gamma levels, overall color skewed from magenta in the unders to greenish in the overs. Matching with the chart eliminates that color drift. Unfortunately, I could not get Resolve 11's color chart feature to match shots with different picture profiles so I'll at least use it to take away the color variable when comparing different exposures in the same profile, allowing us to more accurately observe the noise differences in this test. Something else we'll notice in allowing Resolve to automatically match the color chart is that the image resulted in an overall magenta hue, possibly due to the original green bias of the S gamut. While the default S gamut setting brought the underexposed image back with a fair bit of noise, it at least looks like digital snow. You'll see that the chroma noise has been aggravated due to the excess saturation, especially in Andrea's dress, even more so in her face when we match the color chart. Here, the noise becomes red splotches all over the skin tones, making poor Andrea look like a burn victim. Of course, the best course of action would be to avoid underexposing to that degree altogether with this camera in S-Log2. The next color gamut we'll look at is the cinema setting. Straight away, I observe that the green bias of S gamut is significantly reduced. The Rec. 709 conversion shows more pleasing skin tones, though the color chart match desaturates the reds quite a bit. The next color setting is Pro, with even better skin tone accuracy. I think the picture says it all. I like it a lot, and I'll probably use it 8 out of 10 times I shoot on this camera. Finally, we'll look at something called Pick Pro. It's not a default setting you'll find out of the box. Rather, it's a custom profile created by DP Coley Hicks with slight adjustments to the color matrix with plus eight saturation. I'm not gonna steal Coley's thunder, so if you'd like the color settings, I'll let you look them up and ask him directly.
Now, let's look at each color setting with a proper LUT applied. This would happen to be my preferred LUT for Kodak 5203 stock. It's finally managed to properly dial out the green from the default S gamut, and may make it my preferred setting if I'm planning to process the footage using this LUT. The other profiles end up with colors too juiced for my taste, but then again, this is merely a neutral starting point. Lastly, I'll play you out on a series of shots I did on the fly. I imagined myself in a gorilla scenario where I had minimal lighting. These weren't as controlled as my primary test, so I'll just A, B the original and graded versions for you here. I started out on exteriors at dusk, then moved to mixed lighting scenarios, playing with the color balances. I also bumped up to 20,000 ISO for the final shots, writing the exposure and blowing out the windows, the not. Hopefully these results will inform further tests in defining your own looks, which I look forward to seeing.